hey hello everyone today i'm back with another video and this video is for you all guys who are preparing for the norset so aims norset 2020 examination so the very important thing which i should say before starting this video is that prepare yourself consciously and consciously means that you should see the syllabus also whenever you are starting uh, your preparation and the important questions or the topic need to be prepared because this very few days are left for the exam like uh, if it it will be on 1st September then might be you are having just 10 days with you if it is on 20th September then you can have a month so I will be helping you daily and putting some of the questions and important topics so let's first of all very un important thing is understand the exam so aims exam last year i have given 2019 so there the important thing which you need to remember the very first is you should know the syllabus like what all syllabus is included how many questions will be there and each question carries how many marks and how much time is given for uh, completing that paper so tips and tricks to solve the mcq i will be telling you because that is very important because if you don't know how to solve the questions mcqs you won't be able to answer uh, the question correctly and the important thing next is what to study plan with the days very important because you have very few days with you so you should be knowing what to be study and uh, for how long you should study one subject or one topic the important topic i will be mentioning day by day so today the uh, subjects which i am taking is from major and major uh, minor subjects so we'll see in coming slides so let's first understood the syllabus if we talk about the norset aims examination so the lay syllabus includes two things the nursing part and the gk and aptitude part so the nursing part carries 80 to 90 percent that related to our nursing subjects and whereas the gk and aptitude is carrying the 20 marks or 20 to 10 percent so last year when we give 2019 the aims examination so at that time total 200 questions came uh, and out of which around 180 questions were from uh, your nursing and GK and aptitude carries 20 marks so according to that only I have seen the syllabus so if we talk about just nursing so in nursing major subjects and minor subjects are again further divided because every uh, it was a BSc nursing course which is of four years you won't be able to complete it in a day or in a month or in a year yes you can do finish it uh, with the revision that is very important so the uh, nursing is further divided into major subject and the minor subjects so let's see what are the major subjects and what are the minor subjects the very first is major subjects are i think everybody is aware about that these are medical surgical nursing foundation of nursing obstetricals and obstetrics and gynecological nursing psychiatry nursing child health nursing and community health nursing whereas minor subjects are these are anatomy and physiology then we have a biochemistry then we have a nutrition then we have a image based questions related to any of the area research even nursing management is also included in minor subjects nursing education and rest other subjects which used to be there in our bsc nursing like like your pharmacology psychology so these all are the subjects which are included in the minor subjects so moving to the next is very important once you are aware about the minor subjects now the question and marks how many questions will be there so i told you before also there can be a 200 questions and allotted marks will be uh, your three hours that is your 180 minute so each question carry one marks negative answer deducts one third of that question that is 0 0.33 mark and three hours will be given for 200 questions all will be multiple choice questions image page question will be there and there can be a video based also okay so talking about the very important thing is tips and tricks 
yes i know everybody aware that we need whenever we are for, uh, solving the mcqs we need to know the things which is very important first is read each question carefully without seeing the option at least two times matlab means you have to read the statement at least two times without seeing your options then you can go for seeing the options once you see are the options ultimate uh, simultaneously you will identify that two of them or four out of four two of them will be not the answer so you can omit them eliminate them whereas two will be seen as a answer so if you are sure about answer then mark it correct if you are not sure about it please prioritize it and uh, try to remember it if it is a nursing ap application based so think about it in the clinical set setting how it is working and then answer it the next thing which we need to remember is the very important study plan so i told you before also if it is on 1st september exam then we have just 10 days so you have to plan your study plan also because uh, if you want to be in this you have to work hard so take at least one test daily till 31st august very important so 10 days if we count from today so there will be 10 mock test you will be able to complete there are many of the question papers available even i can also put up into the description box some of the questions which are available with me the pdf i will be sending it so try to complete one major and two minor subjects daily basis by reading their synopsis synopsis means the content part i in target high as well as in the saunders book both the books are good for the content even i like mosby also personally i use mosby a lot and then solve at least 60 question for a major and 30 30 for the minor so that you can finish your uh, content by 10 within a 10 days so this is all reminder is main important thing is you have to practice that is the thing so don't go here and there for uh, your uh, other things uh, to collect the question paper whatever questions you have uh, just 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 go for it and try it again and again do it once you do it check your answers where the lack has been there so then you can do the practices each day i will be putting a one pdf if i definitely i have a some pdfs with me so i will be sending it to you in the description box you can download and practice it now talking about today's uh, our presentation is the important topic topic which i am taking that we'll see one major subject that is obstetrical and gynecology and two minor anatomy and nutrition and biochemistry i will be taking today so let's see one by one what are the questions the very first question is the important topic very important to know is that in obg i think a uh, very constrictive uh, Uh, area is there so you can even finish the obg in one day or one or two days so folic acid and ntds which are related edd and pog calculation you can if you are not able to identify please go and watch my videos pelvis and skull videos you can watch their diameters the bones anatomy of that menstrual irregularities you can see like polymenorrhea then signs and symptoms of three p's like probable sign your uh, presumptive signs and your uh, uh, positive signs so that is very important instruments which are used in the gynecology and obstetrics that are very important position and presentations are very important because image based questions are coming nowadays partograph also very important when the active phase start when the latent phase start what is the transition phase what lochia at what day lochia occur abnormalities of placenta they can be images which are related to the abnormality of placenta eclampsia menstrual disorders test and investigation cancer and flora and even sometimes they ask the bacteria and flora which is occurring so that is very important thing very minor minor things are there which you need to Uh, rebrush it now color of discharge is very important especially in the case of the amniotic fluid they ask it others are placenta you can include it into that talking about anatomy i think every very few question used to come from the anatomy which is again a part of the medical surgical included spinal cord and bones 
वट आर द बोन्स ओके रेंज ऑफ मोशन कॉन कैन कम लाइक अबडक्शन एडक्शन क्रेनियल नर्व्स डेफिनेटली दे विल आस वन क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द क्रेनियल नर्व्स लाइक विच क्रेनियल नर्व सेज दिस थिंग क्वाड्रेंट्स दे यूज टू आस इन इफ द पेन इज देयर इन अपर क्वाड्रेंट विच टाइप ऑफ क्वाड्रेंट इट इज इफ द स्टमक इज लाइज here which is this quadrant so this type of question can be occurring nerve supplies can be asked like blood supply and uh, organs are receiving which type of blood supply this can be asked nutrition and biochemistry is again a very uh, important part that is a cell transport diffusion you have you can see there are very many questions are coming from osmosis so videos are there with the fluid and electrolyte in my channel you can check it out Uh, vitamins, protein, and amino acid. Definitely, one day I will be making a vitamins short video so that you can remember all carbohydrates. Enzymes are used to be asked. Measurements of some of the formulas are being asked. Metabolism formulas are asked. So that is very important, which you need to remember. So that's all. We'll start with the first question: Is which of the following is not a screening examination for breast cancer? Let's see the options: breast biopsy. intravenous pyelography breast imaging and clinical breast examination once more go for the statement and ask read it which of the following is not a screening examination for breast cancer so if you use that formula where i told that see the options and try to eliminate see clinical breast examination is a part of that breast biopsy is a part of that even the breast imaging is also a part of that but intravenous pyelography is not a part of the breast cancer examination so the correct answer is b that is intravenous pyelography moving towards our i think this is the way how you have to solve the question the second is placenta secretes all following hormones except so it is asked which the hormone is not secreted by the placenta the first is progesterone second is hcg that is your human chorionic gonad gonadotropin third is luteinizing hormone and the fourth is estrogen so i think everybody is aware that placenta secretes progesterone estrogen hcg but the luteinizing hormone which is secreted by the ovary so the answer is c okay i think hope i hope you also understood the answer also if you have any doubt in between the questions you can put up into the chat box or into the comment box so this time i am telling you again please make a subscribe so that i can start with the live chat if you are able to uh, understand my thinking so the question third is increase uterine blood flow occurring at re regular interval or loss of more than 80 ml of blood is called as please this question is from the dysfunctional uterine bleeding which i was telling is a important part so increase uterine blood flow occurring at regular interval or loss of more than 80 ml blood is called as options are a metrogia b cryptomenorrhea c hypermenorrhea and the fourth is epimenorrhea i think by the 80 ml more than 80 ml you can identify that is hyper more to so hypermenorrhea or option c is the correct answer for this question moving to the word the next question is which of the following sexually transmitted disease has bacterial origin please understand stds which are having bacterial origin the very first is syphilis second is hepatitis b c is the trichomonas vaginitis and fourth is a scabies so scabies is a disease which is not causing by the bacteria even the hepatitis b is not causing by the bacteria vaginitis is also not causing by the bacteria that is a flora which is causing it so the correct answer is syphilis that is a option a the next question is a permanent cessation of menstruation at the end of the reproductive life is called as please focus on the word cessation cessation means stop so let's see so the answers questions answers are or options are telarchy menarche menopause precocious puberty 
so it says cessation means stop so it is a menopause and also we need to focus on the word that is the end of reproductive life okay so the correct answer is c that is menopause next question is absolute inability to conceive for one or more reason if a uh, person is not able to conceive for one or more reason that implies as a impotency b infertility c fertility and d sterility so what can be the answer the answer is b that is infertility okay so next is question 7 the height of a uterus is midway between symphysis pubis and umbilicus at which week of gestation please understand so they are asking at between the u midway between the symphysis pubis and the umbilicus which week of gestation is there the first is 12 weeks second is 28 weeks third is 8 weeks and fourth is 16 weeks so what can be the answer because if we see on the symphysis pubis is considered as 24 in some books it is 20 so it is will be 16 weeks okay so the correct answer is d that is 16 weeks next question is which of the following is the method of termination of pregnancy in the second trimester please remember method of termination of pregnancy in second ter- trimester at 13 to 20 weeks let's see the options mefepristone vacuum aspiration methotrexate oxytocin infusion let's use that formula elimination so mefepristone if we say it is early in abortion we used to give or early induction we used to give vacuum aspiration is not uh, not included in second trimester and third is methotrexate is also not an part of termination method in second trimester so the correct answer is d oxytocin infusion let's go to the next question is identify the procedure shown in the image in the labor room let's see the image and the options so this image you can see i think you can remember the labor room image also when the patient is uh, lying down with this some equipment so let's see the the first option is a color doppler b is nst c is amniocentesis and the four is emg so i think color doppler is not there second nst can be the answer c amniocentesis means they are not puncturing anything so it is not emg is a no that is kind of ekg which is not there not a ecg kind of thing so this the correct answer is nst that is non stress test you can see the paper is also lying there mother is put on with the belt with the cardio tokographs so this is the image the next question is identify this instrument so let's see first the instrument the instrument is seems like this so you can only see the tip so it doesn't look like a forcep also if we see the first option is alice forcep no it is also not green armitage it is also not valsalam yes the correct answer is c you try and sound okay next question is identify the obstetrical grip so you can see the obstetrical grip in the image so please identify and tell us see fundal grip it is not there b lateral grip it is not there you can see the hands are towards the feet of the mother pelvic grip no it can be okay and a poly grip so the correct answer is c that is a pelvic grip understood next question is use of this instrument okay so the options are this is seems like a spatula array spatula i can identify myself so this is a uh, correct answer is pap smear because it is not used for the cervical dilatation it is not used for the retraction it is even not used for the curettage the next question is what is the presentation shown in the picture so i told you the important questions uh, topic from there only questions are coming so first is you can see the head is downside so this is a presentation which we need to identify 
सो द ऑप्शन आर एल ओ पी लेफ्ट ऑसिपिटो पोस्टीरियर आर ओ पी राइट ऑसिपिटो पोस्टीरियर एल ओ ए लेफ्ट ऑसिपिटो इंटीरियर आर ओ ए राइट ऑसिपिटो द वेरी फर्स्ट थिंग इज विच वी नीड टू रिमेंबर इट्स लेफ्ट साइड सो इट कैन बी लेफ्ट ऑसिपिटो पोस्टीरियर और इट कैन बी लेफ्ट ऑसिपिटो एंटीरियर बट इफ यू सी द हेड एंड द ऑसिपुट एंड इज इन द एंटीरियर वे so the correct answer is left occipital anterior that is option c the next question is yeah a big question usually what happen when we attempt the question we used to omit this uh, big questions but please see the question then only you can omit it otherwise don't please don't skip it so a 29 year old lady with autoimmune disease complaints of amenorrhea since 4 weeks on investigation her upt came to be positive and confirmed as pregnant okay which of the following is the immunoglobin that will provide protection to the fetus in the womb okay let's see the options the options are iga igd ige igg so <laughs> i think if we remove that scenario only one immunoglobin in is there which can uh, cross the placental barrier that is igg so the correct op answer is option d that is igg so don't worry about the long questions please just read it out nothing else is there in that they just give a scenario you have to identify the answer okay next question is a client in labor is transported to the delivery room and prepared for cesarean delivery after the client is transferred to the delivery room table a nurse places her okay a patient is there who is prepared for the delivery for cesarean section which type of position need to give in the delivery room this was the question so the options are a supine so position with a wedge under the right hip okay tendelberg position with the legs in the stirrup no prone position with the legs separated and elevated no semi fowler position with the pillow under the knees i'm not sure sure about the options but i think b c is not there because tendelberg position we are not giving prone position we are not giving to a mother semi fowler position also we will not give under the knees pillow no no we don't give so we'll go with the correct answer that is option a supine position with the wedge under the right hip this is the way you have to solve the questions the next question is a nurse is monitoring the amount of lochia drainage in a client who is 2 hour postpartum and notes that client has saturated a perineal pad in 1 hour okay the nurse report the amount of lochial flow as let's see the options scant light heavy excessive okay a patient is there who is having a perineal head which is saturated in 1 hour so this won't be a scant because scant is very less light will not be there heavy can be there but excessive so this is confusing so we'll go with the correct answer is option c that is heavy not excessive because it is taking 1 hour to get saturated so the correct answer is option c that is heavy let's see the next question kegel exercise used after delivery to okay so the use of kegel exercise is asked strengthening urinary and rectal muscle okay strengthening abdominal muscle okay sub involution okay and prevent pph so let's use the elimination method so sub involution will not be there because we need to do the involution not sub involution pph no it won't be able to prevent the pph it can strengthen the muscles which muscles so if we do the kegel exercise you can identify the urine and rectal muscles are strengthened so the answer is option a strengthening urinary and rectal muscle this is the correct answer let's go to the next question is vitamin which help in wound healing very important question this question can be come for scenario based also so you should know the correct answer this is just applicable answer direct vitamin a vitamin b vitamin c vitamin d i think everybody is aware answer is correct answer is option c that is vitamin c helps in healing of the wound 
The next question is folic acid prevent which congenital abnormality? I told you the folic acid question used to come so both in nutrition as well as if from the OBG part they ask question. So the uh, options are NTDs or neural tube defect, Down syndrome, congenital heart disease and congenital hypothyroidism. So elimination method says Down syndrome and congenital hypothyroidism to be eliminated. Now two options left with the congenital heart disease and tube defect. I think the not I think I am sure that correct answer is option A that is neural tube defects like your encephaly and then your uh, um, palate, cleft palate, cleft pillip can be occurring. So this is the neural tube defect which is prevented by folic acid that's why we give in the early in pregnancy as well as in the preconception period the next question is all are the vitamin deficiency in children except okay which is the vitamin deficiency which does not occur in the children first is rickettsia second is megaloblastic anemia c is simple goiter and fourth is bite or spot so Rickettsia I have seen the children are having it. Pytot spot occur because of the vitamin E deficiency which I have seen. Megaloblastic also anemia I have seen but I think goiter doesn't occur. Because in the later say when iodine deficiency is coming then only simple goiter occurs. So the correct answer is option C that is simple goiter. Next, moving to the next question is the nurse is conducting a dietary assessment on a client who is on vegan diet. Okay. The nurse provide dietary teaching focusing on food high in which vitamin may be lagging in vegan diet. Okay. So, we need to identify the vitamin which is not present in the vegan diet. So, yeah. So, options are vitamin A, vitamin B12, vitamin C, vitamin E. So A we can get which from the leafy vegetables, vitamins. E also we can get it. The C also we are getting into fruits. I think B12 which is lacking. So the correct answer is option B that is B12. Guys if you have any doubt for any of the option or the answer please let me know in the comments. Okay, the question is the phenomena at 8th week of gestation where pulsation are felt in the lateral fornix in, is called as. I told you the question from sign and symptoms is also used to come. So this is a part of a sign and symptoms of pregnancy. So the question asks at 8th week if you are feeling a pulsation at the lateral fornix what is condition called as? Let's see the options. So the options are Chadwick sign. Goodell sign, Osiander sign and Hager sign. So Chadwick sign we know that is a bluish discoloration. Goodell sign also we know that is a softening. Hager sign is not present. The by man, by man, examination it is there. So the correct answer is option C that is Osiander sign. Next question is. Which of the following is a retroperitoneal structure? Please understand the question asked is retroperitoneal. Okay, let's see the options. Stomach, it's in front, no. Pancreas, it's in front, no. Kidney, can be there. Splin, no. So the correct answer is option C, that is kidney. The next question is identify the green color bone which is given in this image. Options are zygomatic bone, ethmoid bone, maxilla and temporal. So let's remember our anatomy. So if we talk about that bone, zygomatic, not sure. Ethmoid, it's not there because it's near to the nose. And maxilla is also not there. Temporal, not there. So the correct answer is zygomatic bone, which is in between the periorbital region to the cheeks area. So this is the green part, which is called as a zygomatic bone. So the correct answer is option A, zygomatic bone. Let's go to the last question of my today's video. So identify the red marked area in the image. So the, this red part, I think students can remember their uh, your lab classes when they used to uh, read their pelvis. Okay, so sacral pulmonary, no. Anterior superior iliac spine, 
कैन बी ग्रेटर ट्रोकेंटर नो एंटीरियर इंफीरियर इलियक्स पाइन सो लेट सी वट इज एन इट इज सुपीरियर और इंफीरियर यस द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन बी दैट इज एंटीरियर सुपीरियर इलियक्स पाइन सो आई होप यू ऑल इंजॉय दिस वीडियो इफ यू डू प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब एंड दिस इज ऑल आई वॉन्ट टू से थैंक यू एवरी वन कीप डूइंग ग्रेट सी यू ऑल सून डोंट वेस्ट योर टाइम जस्ट स्टडी हार्ट दिस इज द फ्यू डेज लेफ्ट फॉर यू टू स्टडी हार्ट एंड फाइंड अ सक्सेस इन योर लाइफ विद दिस ऑल थैंक यू एवरी वन कीप स्टडिंग एंड बी हेल्दी एंड वाइज थैंक यू एवरी वन